Today, students, we will do part 2 of EVS 1, lesson 4 for standard 5, environmental balance. For a complete lesson, do watch part 1. You'll get the link in the description box below. This video was made just for you. Do remember to like, share and subscribe. And in nature, there are many food chains. Okay. And if one of the links in any chain is lost uh, from the chain, can the food chain last? Can we say that the food chain? We'll say the food chain is broken. Okay. So, if any one thing is lost, the other will not be able to survive. And so, the food chain is lost forever. Here is another food chain. Okay. So, we have the sun and the plants as well as the, the rabbit eating the plants and the snake eating the rabbit. So, this is another food chain. Now, let's learn about the food web. Okay, now observe the various food chains shown in the picture. Okay, so here is a picture given to you and observe the food chain. Okay, so you can see there are all these animals interdependent, follow the arrows. Okay, so you will not just find one food chain. There are many, many food chains and all these food chains are dependent on each other. So, here they have asked you this question, find the different food chains of which the worm and the wor mouse form a link. Okay, so look at the worm. Where is the worm? Here. Where is the mouse? Here. So look at the food chain and draw the connection or write down, note down the connection. And one living thing can be part of a number of food chain that gives rise to the food web in nature. So one food, one particular food can give rise to many such food chain. So it's just not one animal depending on another. Okay. It is, there are interdependent, lots of animals. Okay. And do answer this question and to check your answer, you could visit our website at www.jkacademy.com. You'll get the link in the description box below. So, think about this. So, this is called your food chain. So, this is another important statement that is there. A food web formed by the interlinking of several food chain. Okay. So, it is an interlink. Okay. There is a number of links over here. So, that is called the food chain. Okay. And that is called the food web. Okay, so number of food webs together forms, for number of food chains together forms a food web. Okay, now let's understand something very important. The most important food in the food chain are the plants. Now we have seen so many food chains, isn't it? And in each of the food chain, we saw that plants are the most important. So there are animals that depend on the plants as well as there are other animals depend on these animals. So we have the uh, animals that eat only these plants and there are other animals that eat this animals. So we find that plants are the very important source of food in all the food chain. So, every living thing gets its food from the environment, isn't it? There is nothing that comes out automatically, like magic, nothing magic happening. So, everything is dependent on the other and every little thing, the minutest of thing to the biggest of thing, the elephant as well as the smallest insect will get its food from the environment. Okay, now many animals in the environment eat only plants, isn't it? We have seen that the deer eat only the plants, the rabbits eat only the plants, okay? But there are other animals that eat the animals that live on these plants. So, we know the tiger eating the deer, here we see the snake eating the rabbit. So, there are other animals that depend on these animals that eat only plants. But plants make their own food in the presence of sunlight using water and carbon dioxide from the air, isn't it? Do plants get the food from somewhere? No, they make their own food but with the help of the sunlight. So, sunlight, they require energy, isn't it? To cook food, we require energy. We require, we just can't keep food and it doesn't get cooked on its own. We heat the food, isn't it? To cook it. So, therefore, in the same way, plants to make their food, they require sunlight. And not only the sunlight, they also will take the water from the soil. So, look at this picture over here. So, they are taking the water from the soil. So, along with the water, all the other nutrients from the soil go to uh, go into the plants, okay, and with the help of the sunlight and the carbon dioxide, okay. So, carbon dioxide, sunlight, water and the nutrients, they are able to make their own food 
and when they are making their own food they give out oxygen so it means that plants are the main support of every food chain so all types of plants trees grass everything like they form the main source so therefore it is very necessary that we protect our environment now let us learn about the environmental balance okay now there are many food chains in the environment we just noticed it isn't it there are many 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 food chains and not only food chains all these food chains are also interdependent interdependent and they form a food web and because of these food chains every living thing gets the food it needs and therefore continues to live isn't it so each and every living thing whether plants animals microorganisms everybody gets their food from the environment because of these food chain okay so there are animals that eat only plants and then there are animals that eat these uh, animals isn't it so microorganisms living in the soil help the process of decomposition of plant residue dead animals excreta etc so microorganisms i just told you about what are microorganisms living things that are so minute so tiny that we cannot see it with our naked eye but they are present they are present not only in the air but they are also present in the soil okay so what does these microorganisms do they will help in the process of decomposition what is decomposition all the dead plants so that is called the plants residue so dead plants dead leaves okay and the uh, other uh, that you know the leaves that fall from the tree so all these things they will decompose that is they will break it down into even tiny 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 parts okay and which go into the soil so not only dead plants but even dead animals and the excreta what is the excreta excreta is the unwanted food part that we throw out of our body okay so that is called the excreta so all these things they break it down that is called decomposition and as a result substances that help the growth of plants are formed so plants take the nutrients from the soil along with the water i just told you isn't it so from where do these nutrients come so these nutrients come from this decomposition okay so the decomposition takes place and the nutrients from the plants the dead plants the dead animals the excreta all go back into the soil and this is taken by the plants again okay so this cycle keeps on going okay going on and on so plants take this nutrients they live they survive they die and these nutrients are gone back okay and animals depend on plants isn't it so again animals when these animals die again it is gone they uh, they go into the soil by getting decomposed so nutrients from these dead animals and plants go into the soil okay so as a result substances that help the growth of plants are formed and get added to the soil and plants use them for their growth okay so these nutrients plants take while preparing their own food so thus plants use up stuff such substances in the soil for their growth and when the plants and animals die the decomposition of their remains adds these substances to the soil once again okay so this process keeps on going on and on and on and on okay so that is how the substances are added back to the soil and the plants can take these nutrients and this is an important cycle in in, in the environment this forms a very important cycle this thing what is a cycle this whole process that goes on continuously okay in the same way also living things get continuous supply of water because of the water supply uh, water cycle isn't it we get continuous water so how do we get water okay so look at this picture alongside we see that, that there are clouds forming and there is rain the rain falls on the mountains the plains everywhere and it forms into rivers lakes streams and this flows throughout all and then there are plants and animals and human beings living on this water and then the water flows into the sea and when there is the sun the summer season all this water gets evaporated and again goes into the soil uh, uh, again goes into the um, clouds and when the clouds get heavy with water vapor okay so they combine each other with each other and then 
there is this water coming down again in the form of rain so this cycle also keeps on continuing and it has been going on for thousands of years okay so this is called the water cycle okay so just like we saw the plant cycle isn't it the nutrients plants and animals how they die they go into the soil back again the nutrients are taken by the plants so also this water cycle keeps on going again and again okay and there is not just these two cycles living things use oxygen from the air for breathing and give out carbon dioxide we know no we take in oxygen and give out carbon dioxide and what do plants do plants use the carbon dioxide from the air for making their food and they give out oxygen isn't it so they give out oxygen and we use their oxygen so this also process keeps on going on okay plants give out oxygen they take in carbon dioxide whereas we take in the oxygen and give out carbon dioxide so this give and take relationship also goes on and this forms another cycle so oxygen is given out in the process and gets added to the air again this too is a cycle in nature okay so this is also another cycle in nature and there are several such cycles in nature so these are three cycles that we saw okay the plant cycle the water cycle and the gas the oxygen carbon dioxide cycle thus there is interaction amongst living uh, living things and between living and non living things so not only living things interact with each other they they are dependent on each other they they need each other but living and non living things isn't it are dependent on each other so they are non living things and living things that are dependent in nature so the interaction goes on continuously this is not stopping by with one or two cycles it goes on and it has been going on for thousands of years isn't it so this helps to maintain the food chain in the environment so this is how the food chain is maintained and it helps in the food chain and when the various cycles in the environment go on uninterrupted okay so these cycles keep on going uninterrupted uninterrupted means without anybody interfering into it without anybody trying to do something to it okay so human beings we are very very uh, we are known to interrupt with nature isn't it so when somebody interrupts then only this food cycle will be affected or the food chain will be affected otherwise nothing can happen this thing see, these cycles have been going on for thousands of years and it will continue going on for thousands of years okay so when the various cycles in the environment go on uninterrupted environmental balance gets it's maintained so this is what is environmental balance when there is a balance in nature everything is in harmony everything is moving smoothly and everything every all the parts of the nature are doing their their work okay they are interdependent so this is called the environmental balance so when there is a balance between living and non living things and the various other components in nature so that time we say that there there is an environmental balance okay and so let us remember this for the existence of living things existence means for the living things to live to survive on this earth it is important that environmental balance is maintained it is important that we maintain this environmental balance and we don't harm the environment in any way now let's just recollect what we learned in this lesson so what have we learned we learned that there are in numerable types of living things on the earth isn't it the first activity that we did by observing what is there in the nature what are the living things that we find around our places so we made a list of it so we from that list we found out that there are innumerable type innumerable means thousands and thousands and thousands of types of living things in the uh, on on living on this earth and there is a interaction between living and non living things in the environment isn't it we saw the various food chain means we saw the various cycles that are formed water cycle the plant cycle the gases cycle okay so we saw that there is interaction not only between living things but even between living and non living things we also saw about the food chain we also saw about the food web isn't it and different kinds of animals plants and microorganisms are found in the different regions of the earth so 
various parts the whole earth wherever there is land form not only land form there we have seen that there are living organisms deep in the waters also as well as in the air also so different animals different kinds of microorganisms are found everywhere on the earth and we studied about the water cycle and various other cycles and food chains in nature to Uh, in nature help to maintain the balance in the environment so to maintain the balance that is everything to run smoothly so that is very very important so this is what we saw that the balance in nature the balance in environment is very important and this balance has been maintained for thousands of years this has been maintained this has been going on on smoothly for thousands and thousands of years and therefore children we should not harm the environment we should take care of the environment environment we should see that the uh, you know the environment is not interrupted it is sm flowing smoothly so even we are dependent on the environment so therefore we should take care of our environment students please solve the exercise that is given to you at the end of the chapter to check your answers to all the textual questions and for the summary meanings other question answers And for free worksheets, visit our website at www.jkacademypro.com. You'll get the link in the description box below. Do remember to like, share, and subscribe.